Hello, welcome back to Retro Break and welcome to episode 60 of Retro Game Pickups. I cannot believe it's been 60 episodes already. That's literally insane to me. I can't believe I've been doing it this long and thank you all for sticking with me throughout these many, many episodes and there's many more to come as well. In fact, I've got so much amazing stuff to show you in this episode that I actually came back here to do a brand new introduction because I've literally got about 20 more games compared to when I actually recorded this episode a few weeks ago. So to begin the episode, I'm going to be showing you all of these new games that I've got here, and then I'm going to hand it back to myself from a few weeks ago to tell you about all the other amazing things that I've picked up recently. So let's get started. So I'm sure a lot of you saw recently my video on the DS. Well, of course I wanted to do a follow up to that on the 3DS, but it turns out that I've got a lot less 3DS games than I have DS games. So over the past few weeks, I've gone a little bit 3DS mad. Look at all these new 3DS games that I've got. So I'm just gonna quickly go through them all, starting with the first one here, which is Picross 3D Round 2. I used to love playing the original Picross game on the DS, so when I saw this one going cheap on Amazon, I had to pick it up, and I've never actually played a 3D version of Picross before, and this was a really interesting game to try out. It's actually got a really unique way of playing, where you actually twist the whole block around and chisel away at certain bits in order to make the 3D pictures. Really cool game. Next up, a game that I'm surprised I didn't already own. Of course, I've got it on the Wii. I got that when it was released way back in 2010. I can't believe that was 11 years ago now. Of course, I'm talking about Donkey Kong Country Returns. And this is a 3DS version, complete with really, really deep 3D, which is something that I love about the 3DS. So when I turned this on and I saw the level going way into the distance with the 3D slider up, I knew that I was in for a treat and a lot of people were actually recommending that I pick this one up, so I'm really glad that I did. Unfortunately, this next game here is nowhere near as good as that. This is Myst, and I say unfortunately because Myst is one of my favorite games of all time. I absolutely loved it back on the PC in the day, but this version is honestly awful. It's dreadful. It's one of the worst games, not just on the 3DS, but it's one of the worst ports of a classic game that I have ever played, ever. It really does feel unfinished. For one thing, all of the graphics in the game are super compressed. It has a really weird control system. You would expect a point and click adventure game like Myst to play out on the bottom screen and you would expect to use the stylus to move around the stage, but no, you use the 3D slider to move a cursor that darts around the screen so fast that you can't even select what you actually wanted to click on and the graphics are rubbish. It really doesn't take advantage of the 3DS in any way at all. I would definitely avoid this one. Now this next game, as you can see, is still factory sealed. This is Dylan's Dead Heat Breaker. Apparently there's a few different games in this series and I've never played any of them. So I'm really looking forward to giving this one a go, but I believe that this is the third entry in the series. So I want to try and track down the other two before I open this one up. And another game here that I haven't played yet, this one is Theat Rhythm Final Fantasy, and I've heard really good things about this one. In fact, I think I remember borrowing it off someone back in the day, back at uni, but there's one thing that is really cool about the inside of this that I wanted to show you here, and that is the fact that this is one of the few games that actually uses the inside of the 3DS case to great effect by putting these different characters there. As you can see, if I slide this up, it's actually printed so that when it goes down like that, the characters' portraits appear within these little cutout bits of plastic on the inside. And I love it when games do something a little bit extra like that. And it's also got a full colour instruction manual, which is really not something I expected from a game this old, or this new, should I say. So really looking forward to giving that one a go. Now next, another game that I haven't opened up yet. This is Sushi Striker Way of the Sushido. And I remember when this came out a few years ago, people were really upset that it was like 35 pound for what is basically a little flash game on a 3DS or on a Switch. This game came out in both systems. But I'm very happy to say that I picked this up for around a fiver maybe. So even if I don't get around to playing it for a while, you can't really go wrong for that. And it is a first party Nintendo game as well, which to get one for that price is kind of rare. 
Now, these next two games, I picked both of these up recently to finish off my handheld Tetris collection. I've almost got all of them now. There's one really hard to get Tetris game for a handheld, and that is Tetris for the Wondrous One, which is generally over £100 now, which is ridiculous. But I managed to get both of these very cheap, and they're both good in their own rights. They are Tetris Ultimate, which is by Ubisoft, I believe. And there is this other one, which is just by Tetris Online, which is simply called Tetris. And the thing I love about this one is the fact that it uses the Miis, but the Miis are just crazy, over, hyper-reactive about everything that's going on. I thought it was so funny. You basically start the stage and it's just me wearing a Tetris hat and just dancing like crazy with all the music in the background and the cityscape and stuff. This one, on the other hand, is a lot more plain and simple. And there is a Vita version of this game as well, but I would definitely recommend this one that's simply called Tetris, if just for that crazy me dancing around. I thought that was so funny. Now, this next game here, this is part of a series that I finally got every game for. I actually got the last game in the series. I may as well show this now as well. This is Umihara Kawase Fresh for the Switch and Umihara Sayonara Umihara Kawase, let me get my word straight, for the 3DS. And these are the latest two games in the series. And this 3DS one, uh, unfortunately this is the Japanese version, so while I can't actually play this, I actually just bought this for the collection, I did actually go on the eShop and download the English version of the game. Which actually set me back another 20 quid because this one was full price, but there you go, so I've kind of got it twice. I have it on the 3DS, well, on the 2DS, and physically I've got the Japanese version there. And like I said, I just picked up the Switch version as well. And the thing I really like about this, it's actually in the Switch at the minute, but on the back of the box you've actually got a map of the main area, which I thought was really cool. And surprisingly, for a Switch game, I was not expecting this one bit. Like Theatre Rhythm, a full colour instruction manual. That's just amazing. So. Uh, Nick Alice did a fantastic job with that, and unfortunately I did order the special edition of this game off the Nicholas online store, but because of Covid and because of all the restrictions with postage and stuff, that version is still on its way here, but I'm trying to do a video on the series, so I picked this standard edition up on Amazon, and when I do get the special edition, hopefully in a few weeks time, hopefully before I actually upload the video. I'm going to be giving this one away as a giveaway, as a prize, to someone who watches the retrospective that I'll be putting up in a few weeks time hopefully. So if you want to actually win this copy of the game here for yourselves, look out in a few weeks time. I'll put it in the community tab here on YouTube, I'll announce it on Twitter and stuff and maybe you can win this in the future. And moving on to another Umihara Kawase game before I come back to the DS ones. This one was very, very kindly given to me by the guys over at Strictly Limited. And I do actually cover this in more detail later on in this video from the bit that I recorded a few weeks ago. So I'll wait until then so you can see it all. But I just wanted to bring it up right now and give you a taste as to what's to come later on in this video. I was so, so excited when they actually sent this to me. My god, I'll get back to it later on, but yeah, wow, just wow. Right, what else have I got here? There's a few games that I got from Argos not too long ago, so I'll quickly go through all these now. They are Yokai Watch 2, uh, both versions, so we got Fleshy Souls and we got Bony Spirits. I haven't played either of these yet. I also did get the first one, but I have no idea where it is. And the other two games that I got from there, unfortunately, Federation Force, and I have given it a little bit of a go, and I can see why people don't like it. It just seems really basic, really generic, and not the Metroid game that anyone wanted. I know people were very disappointed back in the day. And another game that I was actually quite surprised that this is actually a lot better than I thought it would be, this is Sonic Boom Shattered Crystal. And I know there's one more for the 3DS, and if it's anywhere as good as this one, I will be pleasantly surprised, so I am going to try and pick the sequel up to that uh, very soon as well. We also have here, Need for Speed The Run. I don't really see that many racing games on the 3DS, so when I came across this one in Kex a few weeks ago, before lockdown started back up, obviously, I picked this one up and it's pretty good, it's okay. 
Right, this next one, this is a great game. This is Sega Classics Collection 3D, and the 3D in this is actually mind-blowing. M2, the people who did the um, emulation for this game, did such an incredible job with porting over their arcade games and some Mega Drive games onto this collection in full 3D. It really is a sight to behold, and it's such a shame that I can't actually show how that looks on video, but I tried to record a bit of it using red and blue 3D. So if you do for some reason have any of those old red and blue 3D glasses, you can actually see the footage that I captured for this in full 3D, which I think is quite funny. We also have here, this is one that was quite expensive, but I had heard really good things about, so I just had to pick it up when I saw it on Kex's website. This is Etrian Odyssey Untold, The Millennium Girl. And from what I've played so far, it's really good. I'm about five hours in now. I've been playing it in the evenings after I've finished work and stuff, and I've been quite enjoying it. Yeah, so that is um, Etrian Odyssey Untold. And apparently this one's a remake of the first game that came out on the DS, which I also haven't played, so this was brand new to me. And I am looking to get the other Etrian Odyssey games for the 3DS. I know there's a Mystery Dungeon one that's really cheap, and then I think there's four of the games in this series that are also out on that system. So I'll definitely try and get them at some point. I've also got the 3DS version of Super Mario Maker. And this one's really cool because it's got a load of single player levels built in. They're all based on the different Mario themes. And it's kind of trippy playing the new Super Mario Bros. U style on the 3DS. I never thought that would be something that I would see. Unfortunately though, there's a weird thing about this game and that's the fact that you couldn't upload your own stages onto the online side of it. You could only do that from the Wii U, which I always thought was a bit weird. And I'm sure that put a lot of people off playing it back in the day. But if I suppose if you didn't have a Wii U and you only had a 3DS, this was a really nice backup and I just love the yellow case that it came in as well. Unfortunately, no full colour instruction manual for this one. So I've got four more 3DS games here. We have Ever Oasis, which is one that I'd always heard really good things about and I'm so glad that I finally got my own copy. This was made by Grezzo and it's a completely original game. Grezzo, if you don't recognise that name, are the people that made the remakes of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask for the 3DS. So they definitely had a really good pedigree behind them when they went into making this. And you can tell they knew exactly what they were doing with the system. This honestly has some of the best graphics that I've seen on the 3DS overall. It really is a good looking game. I haven't got that far into it though, but I do plan on going back to it. We've also got Fire Emblem Shadows of Valentia Echoes or Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia. This one is a remake of Fire Emblem Gaiden for the NES or the Famicom. I've actually really been enjoying this. I'm not usually the biggest fan of Fire Emblem games, but this one really sucked me in. I've actually been really enjoying this over the past few weeks, playing it in the evenings, and I would definitely recommend it. And it's quite beginner friendly as well, because I don't class myself as an expert in any of the Fire Emblem games. So when I got this and I really easily got into it, I would highly recommend it if you're just starting out on Fire Emblem. And the last two here, Virtue's Last Reward. I haven't started playing this one yet, but I was a huge fan of 999 on the DS when that came out. Years and years ago, I imported it from America, and I'm really glad to get the sequel. Apparently, there's another one on the 3DS as well, so I'll try and track that down. And the last one here, this one was recommended to me on Twitter. This is James, James Noir's Hollywood Crimes 3D. And this is kind of a Professor Layton style game. It's not what I was expecting. I was actually expecting something along the lines of a hidden mysteries, like search the room out and find the clue sort of thing. And I love the fact that they also included some old FMV style sequences as well, which was really cool to see. So wow, that was a lot of 3DS games. Now, like I said, I've actually recorded a lot more than what you've seen right now. Before we move on to the second half of this video, I have one more game that I wanted to mention, and that is this game here by Ethan Fox called Nina Aquila Legal Eagle. And this is the second game in a series of three, and I actually found out about this game recently thanks to the magazine Pixel Bison, and I promised the developer that I would mention his game in one of my videos, so here it is. Unfortunately, I haven't had a lot of time to play it yet, and I would like to go back and play it from the start. But from what I've played so far, it seems like a really fun game and I love the sense of humour as well. So I'm really looking forward to trying out all the games in the series. If you want to try it out, I'll put a link in the description so you can go and check them out on itch.io. And if you bought the Racial Justice bundle, you actually do already own this game. So go and check it out on there as well if you've got that. 
So now I'm going to pass myself back to myself from a few weeks ago to show you all the other things that I picked up recently. I really hope you enjoyed watching so far and please subscribe if you did enjoy it. I'm well on my way to 10,000 subscribers now and that's simply unbelievable. Now on with the second half of the video. We've got some retro stuff, we've got some modern stuff, I've got the PS5 to talk about. There's just so much to get into in this episode but before we do I just wanted to say a huge thank you to all of my new Patreon supporters and all of my new subscribers. It's really great to see so many new people on the channel in general. So a big hello to everyone. And now let's take a look at what I picked up in the past few months. So we're going to start the episode off here with something really interesting that you can't actually see yet. I didn't even know this existed until recently. This is an SSX snowboard replica. It's a plug and play TV game console thing. So it comes with this and you basically hold this in your hand and there's some buttons there, there's an enter button, there's an on and off switch and it takes I think four AA batteries and it's a really basic version of SSX. I'll try and get this hooked up in a bit to get some footage. The main reason I got this is because I'm planning on doing a series retrospective on all the SSX games and so when I found out this existed I just couldn't pass it up and apparently there's three other versions of this by the same company and they all look more or less the same but this one's got the SSX branding so I'm really really looking forward to giving it a go. I haven't actually given it a go yet but if I do before this video goes live I'll put some footage over here now so you can see what it's like. Unfortunately as you can see here it didn't actually work at all. I think the battery compartment was a little bit corroded so I'm going to try and find a plug and see if that fixes it. So fingers crossed I can still show it off in the retrospective. But definitely stay subscribed because at some point next year I am going to be looking into all of the SSX games in detail. It is taking a while to do because I want to play through every single one of the games and give you my fair impressions of all of them. It is a series that I really enjoy so I really want to make sure that I do it the justice that it deserves. And while we're on the topic of SSX games I had three more games that I needed to get to finish my collection. So the first one here is for the N-Gage called Out of Bounds and this is actually kind of the same game as this one on the Gizmondo which is just called SSX3 but it's actually an enhanced port of the N-Gage game. Actually I had this game many years ago on the uh, Gizmondo but I never actually officially owned it, I only had it downloaded. And the Gizmondo is a really interesting system. That's what the games look like, they're basically just SD cards with with I guess some Gizmondo formatted code and the really interesting thing about the Gizmondo boxes they all come with this they all come with this little Gizmondo case. So if you were one of the weird kids that had more than one Gizmondo game like I was, you could put your games in that case there and uh, take them around with you. And that is something that I used to do with the Gizmondo, believe it or not. I did actually believe in the system, even though it was doomed for failure since the very beginning. And like I said, the same game came out on the N-Gage, but it's a little bit worse than the Gizmondo one. It's a bit slower. Um, it's actually in the N-Gage at the minute and the interesting thing just like the Gizmondo the N-Gage actually had one of these Cases that came with it as well. I guess that was just a thing that the game developers were trying to do at the time So it's really interesting and I'm definitely looking forward to playing them both for my upcoming SSX video And the last SSX game here. I have it on the PS3, but I don't have it on the 360 until now This is the rebooted SSX game I wasn't a huge fan of it, but I am going to give it another go for my retrospective. So I'm looking forward to jumping back in. And the reason I got this one is because it's actually backwards compatible on the Xbox One X and you can actually play it in 4K. So I'm really looking forward to giving it a go in the resolution that really will benefit the game, I think. So I'm really looking forward to that. Now if you saw my last few videos you'll know that I've been on a bit of a DS binge recently because I picked this up on eBay. This is a 3DS XL with, if you can see it there, a port for a USB and that means that I can actually finally make some videos about DS games by plugging this directly into the computer and capturing the footage and I have loved doing that over the past few weeks. If you've seen my channel over the past few weeks I've recorded actually 30 DS games now and of course since I got that DS I went a little bit DS mad and bought just a few more games that I've been after for the system for a while. Some of these games here were recommendations that I got from you here on YouTube and on Twitter as well and I'm just going to quickly go through which ones they were. I covered this one in detail last week, this is Boulder Dash Rocks, really really enjoyed this one, a lot better than I was even expecting it to be to be honest. 
Uh, the next one here, considering I talked about Bajorn 3 in my last episode, I realised that I didn't have Bajorn Twist, so I'm very happy to finally get Bajorn Twist for my DS collection. It's a really good puzzle game. Uh, this is one that I played back in college. I actually borrowed it off a friend back in college and I really enjoyed it. This is called Contact. A really interesting RPG with a really unique graphic style for the DS. Really good game. This one I haven't had a chance to play yet. This one is called Go Go Cosmo Cops. And the reason I picked this one up is because I used to see it all the time back in the day in game and game station. And just going from the anime styled cover I thought it seemed like a really interesting game. Like I said I haven't given it a chance but I am planning to do more DS videos coming soon. So maybe this will appear in a future DS Hidden Gems video that I'm planning on making. The next one here, and this is one that I used to have, but for whatever reason I traded it in back in the day. This is called Scourge Hive, and it's basically an isometric Metroid game. So there's a lot of exploration, there's a lot of action-packed gameplay. It's a really good game, I did actually finish it back in the day, and I'm so glad I finally got a copy again. Now, this next one, I got this one because a friend on Twitter called Ryan Brown said he was really enjoying it. This is called Dead and Furious, and it's actually a light gun style game for the DS where you use the touchscreen to attack all the different zombies and stuff that are coming towards the screen. Apparently, it's a lot better than anything you could possibly expect for the DS, so I'm really looking forward to giving this one a go soon. Now, this one I saw on some hidden gems lists online and I thought I had to try it out. It's called Nervous Brickdown, and you'd be forgiven for thinking that it's a basic shovelware style game, but apparently this one is actually really interesting with a load of different unique mechanics, and for a breakout clone, apparently it's one of the best you can get, so... Again, I'm really looking forward to trying this one out, and it might just make a future DS video. Um, next up, we have Sega 3D Classics for the 3DS. This is one that I've wanted to get on the 3DS for a long time, so I'm really glad that I've finally tracked down a copy, and I am absolutely blown away by the 3D in this game. I'm going to save it for a 3DS episode, I've got all my 3DS games down there because I am planning on doing an episode just on 3DS games soon, and this one will definitely be making the list, because I've been really enjoying playing this. Another 3DS game here, and I haven't tried this one yet, I only picked it up because it was dirt cheap, and I'm actually planning on doing a Resident Evil retrospective at some point next year. This is the Mercenaries 3D. It was kind of a tech demo for the 3DS before they came out with Revelations, I believe, so this was more of a proof of concept to see whether the engine would work. It's a very simple game, it's basically just the Mercenaries mode, but it plays really well on the 3DS from what I've heard, although I haven't actually tried it yet. And the last DS game that I've got to show in this episode is called Puzzle Bob on Galaxy, and this is one of the best Puzzle Bob on games there is. Of course, if you enjoy Puzzle and Bubble, you know exactly what to expect. This one's just really well polished all round, and it's a really good puzzle game. Now, here's something that I've wanted for a long time, and I will be making a video on this at some point early next year. Yes, it's yet another EverDrive. This is the Super EverDrive for the SNES. I'm so excited to check out some of the SNES homebrew games. I've got loads downloaded, and I'm really excited to try them out. And I'm really excited to make a follow-up to my Game Boy and Game Boy Advance. Everdrive review slash overview videos because they seem to be doing really well. So yep, I picked up a SNES one and I'm definitely looking forward to doing a full video on this in the future. So let me know if there's any SNES homebrew games that you think I should check out and I'll definitely get them downloaded and hopefully make a video on some SNES homebrew games early next year. Really looking forward to doing that. Now of course, no Nintendo fan could go this year without picking this up. This is the Super Mario Anniversary Game & Watch. A really nice collector's item and I just love this like sleeve that it comes in as well. I think I'm going to keep it with this tab and hang it up over there. Of course, I've got the system over here. I haven't really played it that much, but for what it is, it's really well made. The screen is really nice on it. I was really impressed. The only problem is it's a little bit awkward to hold because the buttons and the d-pad are right at the bottom so you kind of strain on your thumbs down a bit. It'd be nicer if they were up the top rather than down like that. I was getting cramp after about half an hour but it is a really nice little bit of kit. The only thing I would have liked if there was some sort of kickstand or some way of standing it up so you can see the time because at the minute it's as you can see completely flat so you have to sort of lean over it. If you did actually want to use it as a clock which I guess most people don't. It's just a nice little addition to people's collections and that's all it really is to me so I can't really complain too much. So just like the SSX games that I showed off earlier, these are all games from a particular series that I want to do a retrospective about in the future. These are all Umihara Kawase games, 
and I'm just going to go through them in the order that I've got them stacked up here. So the first one here is Umihara Kawase Bazooka and if you might have noticed there this is actually a preview copy given to me by In In Games and they also sent me some other stuff so I'll briefly show that off. They sent me these little plastic or glass art print things. They're really cool and they smell very strongly of plastic which is quite funny because I've had some more of these in the past and they all smell the same. So they're really nice. I haven't really decided what I'm going to do with them yet, but they are definitely something really cool to have. And as well as that, they also sent over some stickers, some bazooka stickers. This little cloth here, this little cleaning cloth, I suppose, that's really nice. And this cardboard standee, which you might have seen in the background of some of my videos. I've had it over there on the Vectrex in the corner, so I'll put that back over there now so I don't forget it so I was really grateful that they sent all of that stuff over that's just so cool I don't have the other game for the switch just yet I've actually ordered it from the Nicholas store in America so that I can get the one with the Super Famicom box and it's taken a while to turn up so I don't have that just yet but that's the last game that I need to finish my collection and then I can finally start doing my retrospective on the series um, what other ones have I got here? I've got the DS version, which I actually mentioned in my top 15 DS games. This is probably the best Umihara Kawase game there is. I won't go into too much detail about all the games now because I don't want to ruin that video that's coming soon. And there's two more that I got here. I got these two off the Japanese auction site, uh, Yahoo Auctions through Bai. Uh, these are Umihara Kawase Shun and second edition which came out a few years later this one's a second edition that one was really hard to find so i'm really glad i managed to get both of them and there's also the psp version which isn't as good as the others really and the last one i wanted to show off and this i have to give a huge thank you to strictly limited games for actually sending me this i was going to try and buy it but obviously they're all out of stock now and I just asked them, I didn't want to pay crazy amounts of money on eBay, so they were incredibly kind and sent this over to me, and I cannot thank them enough. So, along with the game here, which is a really good game, in fact I've actually got a different game in there, because it's actually in the Vita itself, they also sent me over this really nice collector's edition, which comes with loads of really cool stuff. So there's a nice little sketch there, I'll do some close-ups of all of this, there's a postcard, a big fold-out poster, so there's a really nice one there of like a winter jacket version and then there's the summer bikini version on the back as well so really cool to have that there's also a soundtrack cd in there there's an art book and it's also really interesting because it's also got uh, sort of interviews with the developers behind the games and some of the behind the scenes stuff so i'll definitely be using some of the information from this for the video that i'm working on I did really enjoy reading through that. There's also a sticker sheet in there, although I'm kind of scared of using these stickers, so I'm just going to keep them in this. And something else that's really cool, there's actually a replica SNES cartridge for Umihara Kawase++, which is the Vita version. So that is just a really cool special edition, and that slots in there nicely, like that. So honestly, that's the most excited I've ever been to get a package from any company or anything ever. It was just really mind-blowing when I opened it. I honestly thought they were just going to send me this. So imagine my surprise when I got all of that through the post. I almost cried. It really did sort of make me think that I finally made it on YouTube to get something like this. It's I'm tearing up just thinking about it. Thank you so much for that. Let's quickly go through these. This next thing is really interesting. Someone who actually follows me here on YouTube sent me this. This is a Game Boy game that he actually made. It's called Goggle Boy and the Hunt for the British Drone Racing Association. And he actually made this game in Game Boy Studio for his drone racing friends. So when he asked me if I wanted to get this sent over, I couldn't say no. It even comes with a little instruction booklet and a really nice if I show this off here, a really nice clear blue cartridge. I haven't actually had time to play the game yet, but I do plan 
on playing it. I'm planning on doing a video about some more Game Boy Homebrew games in the future, so don't worry. I know I keep saying I'm going to get around to it, and I promise I will at some point, and I really do appreciate the fact that you sent it over, and I'm sure your friends in the uh, Drone Racing League really enjoyed seeing this as well, so... I'm actually really looking forward to giving it a go. And as well as that, you might have seen my video a few weeks ago where I picked up all of these games from Green Boy Games. I feel like I was a little bit harsh on them, but honestly, it was a really mixed bag, so definitely go and check out the video if you want to know more about all of these releases. Lunar Journey, I really liked, and I really liked Where Is My Body as well, but the other three, not so much, but I'll um, let you go and check out the reviews after this if you want to see some more about them. I also picked up recently this game here, and I've actually completely forgotten what the title is, so if anyone watching knows what this game is, please let me know. The reason I picked this one up is because uh, some of the developers for Quintet actually worked on that game, and I'm planning on doing a Quintet video. I know I've been saying that for years, but I've finally got a script written. It's just a case of actually getting around to playing everything now, so it's still probably quite a long way off. I can't wait to share my enthusiasm and passion for the Quintet company with all of you at some point, maybe next year or maybe the year after, who knows, but I really can't wait to get around to doing it. Another interesting game here that I haven't had a chance to play yet, this is one for my Tetris collection. This is one of the more unique and unheard of Tetris games that I know about. This one is called Tetris Elements that came out in 2004 for Mac and PC. Um, I don't actually have anything that can actually play it. I did try and get it working, but I couldn't get it working, so if anyone's played this version, let me know what it's like. And just like a lot of the other stuff that I've picked up in this video, I am planning to use it in a video in the future, so that's actually a theme with pretty much everything that I've picked up for this video. If you saw my video a few months ago on game collecting addiction, you'll know that I've been trying to cut down on what I buy, but as you can see that didn't exactly work out, so kind of where my headspace is at the minute, I'm actually buying stuff that I'm going to be putting to use in the future, whether that's on videos or whether it's just something for a collection that I've been trying to work towards, but a lot of the stuff I want to try and put back into YouTube, and it's a lot of stuff that I really want to share with the world as well, so that's one of the reasons that I've picked up a lot of the stuff here today. Another game that I want to share with the world at some point, this is one of the Gusson Oyo games. It's a very unknown puzzle series that I really enjoy, and I really want to try and get all of the games in the series to share with everyone so this is a super Famicom one as you can see the conditions not great there was a bit of the box rubbing off there but the game itself is fantastic I really enjoy all the games in that series and a game that I'm not really planning on using a video I literally just picked this one up because I've always thought it sounded really interesting and Denki is one of my favorite Game Boy Advance developers. So this is Go Go Beckham Adventure on Soccer Island. Not the kind of game that you'd expect from me, but this is actually a really fun platforming puzzle adventure game, kind of in a similar style to something like Yoshi's Island, but you play as a really chibi version of David Beckham. It's such a unique and wacky game, and it actually plays really well. So maybe I will make a video on this one in the future, but I don't expect it would actually do very well, because probably not a lot of people have heard of it, but. I definitely really do enjoy the game and I definitely recommend you going and trying to track down a copy if you've got a GBA and you want something a little bit more unique to play. Right, next up, this is something I picked up for the GameCube called the SD Media Launcher and you might have seen in one of my videos recently, I used this to capture all the footage for the Game Boy Advance EverDrive that I did the video for. This basically lets you run homebrew software on the GameCube without having to go through any of the awkward hacks. It's basically just a, a memory card that you put an SD card into and you put a disc into the GameCube and then you can load up any sort of fan-made stuff. It's a really simple way of doing it and I was really surprised to find out that you can actually still buy this brand new on Daytel's website. And that's how I got this one and it works really well. It's pretty much seamless and I definitely recommend it if you want a better way of playing GBA games rather than just using the Game Boy player that comes with it. Now you've probably been wondering what this box back here has been and this is something else that took turned up the other day that I had no idea was actually coming. This was a really nice surprise. This was another box by In In Games. And this was all about the game Bubble Bubble for Friends, a game for the Switch that came out recently. And they sent me this really nice press kit to go along with it. So they've got this really nice standee, just like the bazooka one that I've got back there. And if I can angle the camera up a bit, you might be able to see it right there in the corner. There was one they sent me over for CrossCode a while ago as well, which I think I mentioned in one of these videos in the past. So there's a bubble bubble stand. They also included 
some stickers, which are really nice. I'm going to put one up on the shelf over there. Just like the Umihara Kawase one, there was also these little plastic art prints that smell really plasticky. So, And again, I really do love these, but I'm not entirely sure where I'm going to put them. I would love to be able to display them somewhere someday. Something that was new for this set, a mouse mat, that was really cool. Um, I'm definitely going to be using this. I've got my gaming PC set up in the living room and this would be a really nice addition for it, so that was really cool. And something that's not in the box because I've actually been using it, this little mug here, bubble bubble, and it says coffee time on the other side and I have actually just finished drinking a cup of coffee out of it. And there was one other thing and definitely the best thing in that box and this is an actual bubble blower, so I thought this was just a brilliant addition. Let's see if I can blow some of these towards the camera. One of them just popped in my eye, that wasn't a good idea. But yeah, I thought that was a really cool little addition to the package. So, once again, thank you so much in in-games, I really do love all of these, like, collector's edition press kit things that you're sending over. Keep them coming, and I really do love all of the games that they're putting out as well. They're fast becoming one of my favourite companies. And I'm not sponsored, I'm, they haven't told me to say that. I just genuinely think they're a really good company and they've got a really good taste in what games they're bringing out too. Now, moving on to some more modern stuff. First up, we've got Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity, and I actually forgot it came with these extras. So there's this notebook here, and there's also this really nice poster that I would love to get framed and put up somewhere, maybe when we move into the new house. Hopefully next year I'm getting a new house and a bigger room, so that was a really cool poster that came with it. And of course, there's the game itself. I've only played it for a few hours so far, but I am really enjoying what I've played. I really enjoyed the first Hyrule Warriors when it came out many years ago on the Wii U, so to get a follow-up to that is really exciting. I've been really enjoying it so far. Next up, another game for the Switch that I've been really enjoying. This is Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remastered. One of my favourite racing games ever, and one of my favourite games back in the PS3 days. I was so excited to see that EA had decided to re-release this one. Out of all the Need for Speed games, I really do love this game. And it plays really well on the Switch as well. It looks great, it's got a great soundtrack, great gameplay, just everything you could ask for from an arcade racing game. Another Switch game I got recently, and I haven't put a lot of time into this one yet, but I really do want to. This is East Origins, a game that I've wanted to play for a long time. I'm a big fan of the East series, but this is one that's always passed me up, so when I found out that it was getting a physical release, I was very excited to get this one, and it's in my Switch Lite at the minute, and I've played it for a few hours so far, and just like Hyrule Warriors, I'm really enjoying what I've played. And for the PS4 here, this one I'm borrowing off a friend at the moment, this is Persona 5 Royal, and again, I'm really enjoying it. I'm about 20 hours in now, I've been struggling for time recently to try and play it, but I am getting through it very slowly, and I do see why it gets so much hype, it's a really good game. And it's really weird that they're not releasing it on the Switch. I don't really understand that. Considering Joker's in Smash and the sequels coming out on the Switch, I don't know why they can't port it. I mean, it was a PS3 game originally, so it would definitely run on it. And talking about PlayStation, let's move on to the PlayStation 5. I picked this game up yesterday, actually. It's not one of the games I got at launch. I've actually been playing a lot of Demon's Souls, and I really enjoy that. I'm only on the second area, and it is really difficult. It's the first proper Soul games that I've put a lot of time into, and I'm really enjoying it. I also love what they've done with the controller for the PS5. The adaptive triggers are just really, really cool, and it's something... Something that I've never really felt in a game before and it really does add a lot and I really enjoyed the um, Tech demo that was the Astrobot game. I played all the way through that. That was really fun And like I said, I got this yesterday and I actually stayed up until about 3 o'clock last night playing it I've never played it on PS4 so we picked up the Ultimate Edition so I can play through the original Spider-Man remastered with the Fancy ray traced reflections and stuff. It does look really cool and then I'll move on to Miles Morales after that so if you guys got a PS5, let me know what you think of it, and if you're struggling to get one, fingers crossed you manage to get one soon, and hopefully they restock so everyone else can get one. We were very lucky to get in on the pre-orders before they all started selling out everywhere. And there was one other thing that I wanted to mention in this video, but it's kind of difficult to show because it's all download only. But earlier in the year I did pick myself up a Valve Index for my gaming PC that's in the other room, and I've been absolutely loving it over the past few months. I've played so much Beat Saber, now I can get custom songs. That was just so exciting for me. I also really loved Half-Life Alex, 
and recently I've been playing Phasmophobia in VR with some friends as well and that's really fun so I thought I'd just mention that as something else that I've been playing. So I really hope you enjoyed seeing all of those pickups, there was so much to get through in this episode so thank you all so much for sticking with me all the way to the end of this episode. I want to say a huge huge thank you to Strictly Limited and don't worry the collector's edition is being put to really good use in my upcoming Umihara Kawase retrospective which I'm working on really hard. In fact as soon as I've finished this I'm going to go back and record some more of the games. So please subscribe if you want to see that in a few weeks time. I'm putting my all into it so I really hope it turns out to be a really good video. That's it for now though, thank you all so much for watching. Please comment, please subscribe, please, please, please help me reach 10,000 subscribers. I am so close now and that has been a goal of mine since I started this channel 12 years ago now. So thank you all so much. I really, really do appreciate it. You have no idea. That's it for now. I will see you all next week for the next episode. Goodbye.